Hi everybody, this is Susan Tan here with you today from Authors Everywhere. And today I am going to read to you from my second book, Scylla Lee Jenkins, This Book is a Classic. But before I do, I just want to talk for a second about why I want to read, you from, read to you from this particular book. So this book begins on Chinese New Year, and this is the Chinese dragon that you use in a New Year's dance. Um, and the chapter I'm going to read to you takes place in Boston's Chinatown, which is a place that is really, really special to me. It is a place where my Nai Nai Nyeye, my grandmother and grandfather, lived when they came over from China to America. And it is a place where my dad grew up when he came over to America when he was eight years old. And so one of the reasons I want to read to you from this book is because you might know that in the news, there has been a lot of talk about China and Chinese communities and Chinese American communities. And a lot of this talk has not been very kind and it has not been true. And so I, I've been thinking a lot about my Ye Ye and I thought I would show you a picture of him. Here he is. There he is and there's me. And there's my little sister who if you've read Scylla, you know that's the blob. So when my Nai Nai Ye Ye came to America, they were coming to a country where they didn't speak a lot of the language, right? Where everything was really different and overwhelming. But even in the face of being so overwhelmed and kind of scared, they knew that their focus was on communities. And so they were really, really involved in the Boston Chinatown community. My Yeye was a minister, and so he began a church with community outreach. But one of the things I want to say is that to my Yeye, it didn't matter what religion you were. It didn't matter what religion you were, what you believed, what your ethnicity was, right? He was there for anyone because my Yeye believed that we need to take care of each other, that human beings are all each other's communities and we have to take care of each other. And so I wanna say this because I've been thinking about my yeye a lot, both while I watch the news and see people who are not taking care of each other, right? But also as we think about what we are all doing sitting at home, because I think it's really important to acknowledge that what we are doing right now is taking care of each other, right? And being there for each other as a community. And so to kind of build on all of that, I wanted to read to you about Chinatown and how special it is to me and how to me it is like a second home or a home away from home. And then when I'm done, I'm going to encourage you, I'm going to give you an activity, a writing activity and a drawing exercise to think about where your homes away from home are. And if you want, I would love it if you would share these with me. I'll give you information at the end. And of course, only if an adult says it's okay. So. Without any further ado, I'm going to hop right in to read to you from Scylla Lee Jenkins. This book is a classic, which begins on Chinese New Year, one of my favorite holidays. All right, so here we go. Author's note, which is a fancy way of saying hello. Dear reader, before I start my story, I should tell you that cake is the best. And there will be lots of it in this book, so get excited because this book is all about my family and our traditions, which are rules that everyone knows. They've been around for forever and they have a lot to do with cake. So for example, on birthdays, it's a tradition to have cake at parties and to bring cupcakes to your class at school. And it's a tradition to have moon cakes with lotus or red bean paste inside on Chinese New Year and chocolate cake whenever my grandpa Jenkins comes over for dinner or else he complains. Even traditions that aren't specifically about cake seem to get there in the end. Like on Thanksgiving, when we eat pie, which you can't convince me isn't just cake with a fancy name. So traditions are great and delicious, and I'm excited to write a book all about them. Hopefully you already know me, but if you don't, that's okay too, and I should introduce myself. My name is Scylla Lee Jenkins. I'm nine and a half years old, and I'm destined for greatness as a future author extraordinaire. My last book was, or will be, a bestseller, which is a book that sells the best and then you're famous and everyone waves when they see you and you make lots of friends. I used to think bestsellers were the best kind of book there is and the only kind I'd ever want to write. But this year in third grade, I learned about a new, better kind of book, which is hard to believe because bestsellers have best in their name, but it's true. So I decided to write one. And in case you hadn't noticed, this book is a classic. A classic is the most traditional kind of book there is, which means classics last forever. And everyone knows classic books and what they're about and who their authors are, because a classic is everything a book should be, which is a pretty exciting idea. 
Luckily, I have the perfect story for my classic because my life has had a lot of classic themes in it recently, and not just because of all the traditions and cake in my family. Right after we learned about classics in school, I found out that this summer, my Auntie Eva is getting married. And there's nothing more classic than love, plus romance sells. The wedding will also be an adventure because Auntie Eva has asked me to be her flower girl which means I'll wear a big poofy dress and walk down the aisle and throw flower petals in front of all of our families. This is exciting, but also kind of scary, which is pretty much the, much the definition of adventure, so that's another classic theme covered. The wedding isn't for a while, but I'm sure that between my best friend Colleen, my table mate, Alien Face McGee, who is an alien disguised as a human, but friendly, my little sister Gwendolyn, who's just starting to crawl and choose on everything, my mom and dad, my grandma and grandpa, Nina and Yeya, which are Chinese for grandma and grandpa, I'll find lots more stories to tell you. Ooh, it's a long list. Long list I wrote. I'm hoping that they'll all have classic themes, like quests and epic battles and struggles and drama and more adventures. But at the very least, I can guarantee you that there'll be lots of cake because dessert is a big theme in my family. So I promise there's a lot to look forward to. I hope you enjoy my story, and I hope you can convince your parents to let you eat cake while you read it. Just tell them it's a tradition, so you have to do it. Bonus points if the cake is chocolate or has lotus paste inside. Sincerely, your friend and favorite classic author, Scylla Lee Jenkins, future author extraordinaire. And so now I'm going to read you just a tiny bit from chapter one, because we're jumping into Scylla's adventure. Chapter one, even squished oranges are lucky. My story starts last weekend on one of my favorite holidays of all time, Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year was all about traditions, like eating delicious foods, spending time with your family, and getting red and gold envelopes from grown-ups with money inside. But most important of all, it's about traditions that bring you luck for the new year. Which is why on the morning of Chinese New Year, I had a lot to do especially because that day, Auntie Eva was coming to visit. Sun Yen Fai Lok, Sun Yen Fai Lok, I yelled as I danced around the house, helping my mom get ready for Auntie Eva's visit. That means Happy New Year, I shouted as I skipped by Gwendolyn's high chair. It was her first Chinese New Year, so I knew it was my job to show her that it's the best holiday ever. I'd been practicing my pronunciation with my Nai Nai Yeya because I wanted everything to be perfect. And even though my mom said there wasn't anything for me to do, I was a big help anyway. I ran around and only sometimes bumped into her to make sure that we were following as many traditions as possible to get as much luck as possible. First, I got dressed in red clothes, which is very lucky. I'd wanted to wear my shim song, which is a beautiful Chinese dress. Mine is red and gold with pretty buttons at the neck, but my mom said no because it was too cold. I was disappointed, but then I realized I could get even more luck by wearing every piece of red clothing I own. And I looked great in my red pants, red dress, red polka dot skirt over that, red sweater, red t-shirt, red headband, and red galoshes with ladybugs on them. Plus, I was definitely warm enough, so even though my mom sighed when she saw me, she didn't make me change. Then I made sure to find Gwendolyn's red clothes because I'm a good big sister that way. You're going to love today, I said, as I helped her into red striped pajamas, red socks, a red t-shirt, a red sweater, and a sparkly red tutu. We're going to Chinatown, and there's going to be a parade and dragons and the best food. Ba, Gwen said, clapping her hands, which meant she was definitely excited about it all, especially the excellent good luck out that I'd found her. And she loved it when, as a finishing touch, I found a red scrunchie for her favorite toy, which is an old Batman doll that my dad used to keep in his study because even superheroes need luck and tutus. For my next job, I grabbed all the oranges from the kitchen and set out to put them all over the house. Oranges also bring luck on Chinese New Year, which makes sense because they're delicious. Nai Nai usually keeps her oranges in a bowl by the dining room table, but I wanted to spread out our luck everywhere. So I put one orange in the silverware drawer, one on top of the TV, two in the bathroom sink, one on Auntie Eva's pillow, two underneath my parents' pillows, as a surprise for later, one in Gwendolyn's toy box, one in her sock drawer, and one on my mom's desk. I was just about to ask if we could go to the store to get more oranges when I heard the doorbell. So now I'm gonna skip ahead. So Auntie Eva, Scylla's aunt, arrives. 
and then they all realize that they need to rush off to Chinatown for the parade. So by the time everything was away and cleaned, my mom looked at her watch and said, wait, what time is the parade? So then there was even more rushing and running. But finally, we piled into the car and sped off to celebrate Chinese New Year. Chinatown was beautiful and more crowded than I've ever seen it. Red and gold streamers dangled from windows and in between buildings, and all around, carts sold hot food and pastries, and the air was filled with happy voices and good smells. We walked through the crowded streets until we finally found Nai Nai Nyeya in front of their favorite grocery store. Yeah, yeah, I ran to meet him. San Yan Fai Lok. Wah, Yeya said. This is a Chinese way of saying wow or amazing or oh my goodness gracious me, which is something my grandma Jenkins says when she's really surprised. The way Yeya said it meant he was very impressed. San Yan Fai Lok Zilla, he said, spinning me around in a hug, which as you've maybe guessed is another family tradition. Then Nai Nai and Yeya hugged onto Eva, though she's too tall for spinning. Okay, so I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. Just then, Auntie Eva took me to buy a mooncake. See what I mean about traditions? They always come back to cake in the end. Mooncakes are small and round with beautiful designs on top. Their outsides are thick and golden and they're filled with sweet paste and a salty egg. Auntie Eva and I split a lotus paste cake, which is our favorite, and she let me have the half with more yolk, which is one of the nicest things you can do for someone else. We rushed back when we heard the popping of tiny firecrackers and the sound of drums, and Yeya swung me up on his shoulders so I could see above the crowd as the parade came towards us. From where I sat on Yeya's shoulders, I could see my mom and dad holding hands, and I watched as Nainai put her arm around Auntie Eva. The red and gold banners fluttered in the wind, and my dad bounced Gwendolyn, and I was very, very happy because I love Chinatown. All around me were people I know and places I like to visit, and I could smell my favorite foods and see the store windows full of bright cloth and shimmering fans. The egg inside my mooncake was salty and delicious, and when I accidentally dropped some of the yolk onto Yaya's head, oops, it smeared into the hair gel he wears, and you could barely tell it was there. And I could see all the traditional things that my nana had taught me, and I said, Mom, do you see that? They're putting oranges in front of the store for good luck. Nai Nai smiled up at me, and I smiled down at her, and I knew she was proud of me. The music got louder, and dancers came down the street, then big lion puppets that wobbled their heads and did silly things that made Gwendolyn giggle. Finally, and best of all, came the giant, glittering, dancing dragon, swooping and diving. I clapped, my family cheered, and Gwendolyn let out a happy yell, and the head came right up to us and bowed. After the parade, we made our way toward the restaurant for our Chinese New Year dinner. There were people everywhere, and lots of them knew Nai Nai and Yeya, which meant we had to stop every few steps to say hello, which is another big tradition in Chinatown. I call any friends of Nai Nai and Yeya auntie and uncle, even though they're not, because that's another Chinese tradition. So there was a lot of stopping and hugging and saying, Auntie Stella and Uncle Gerard, and getting hugs and wishing Sun Yen Fai Lok. So thank you so much for listening to my read aloud of Scylla Lee Jenkins. This book is a classic. Um, I will just tell you that the oranges under her parents' pillows did not go so well. And in fact, her mom is going to wake up the day after this chapter ends with crushed orange in her hair. So, you know, sometimes Scylla's attempts to help really help and sometimes they don't, but you know, that's okay. Um, so the activity I have for you today is this, and I'm putting it right up on the screen, which is to draw and write about your home away from home. So my prompt for you is, what is a place that is not your home, but that feels like home? And I want to encourage you to use the details that Scylla brings in in her description of Chinatown. Who are the people in your home away from home? Who are the people who make you feel so safe and so happy? How would you describe your home away from home? Are there smells or sounds or tastes or things that you touch that remind you of your home away from home, right? Or that you notice in your home away from home. And I just want to say too, that your home away from home can be anywhere. So maybe it's a place like a Chinatown. Maybe it's your grandparents' house. 
Maybe it's school and you're having your teacher and your friends and all the cool things you do there. Maybe it's how you feel on the soccer field, right? Maybe no matter where you are, as long as you have a field and a soccer ball and you can run and kick, that is your home away from home. So your home away from home can truly be anywhere. So as I said at the beginning of the video, I would love to see what you come up with. So if a parent says it's okay, you can post your videos online and tag me at Susan SM Tan on Twitter or on Instagram. And I would love to see and share your amazing creations. So thank you so much for listening to this read aloud and to all the things that make Chinatown so special for me and that make Chinatown my home away from home and my family away from home. So I hope you enjoy this activity. I can't wait to see it. Take care of each other, be kind, and remember, have fun. Okay, bye.